Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Jennifer Bowman with Olympia Piano and this short video will be a tutorial for A Dozen A Day Book 2. This is the orange book and the tutorial will be on group one, which is a set of 12 exercises. These exercises are starting to get pretty advanced, so I would suggest maybe learning two to three at a time, and then once you've mastered all of them, then go ahead and play the whole entire set. So we're going to start with group one, and this is in two parts. It's working on a couple different things. The first line, which is called alarm clock, this is working on a musical gesture called a trill, which is when you play two keys really quickly next to each other. The alarm clock, in essence, is a written out trill of four notes per beat. So I want you to consider a couple of things as you are practicing this first line. The first is your hand position. So make sure you have a strong bridge, so not caved like this, but nice and strong so you can see the knuckles. Make sure the first knuckle is not caving. So it's firm and bent like that. And then this will be played on the tip portion of the finger. Item two is as you play this, you're not gonna let your fingers come way off the keys. In fact, you should be pretty much touching the keys, maybe lifting just the slightest bit. So with each group of four, the wrist is going to have a slight up gesture. So it's gonna feel like this. I'll do it slowly and then more quickly. Slowly, the gesture will feel a little bit larger, just so you're getting used to how that feels. And then quickly, it will be a smaller gesture. So here's the slow one. So you're gonna feel down, up, 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 down. We're just trying to make contact so you have an anchor. And then quickly, it would feel like this, down, Now part two, two things we're working on for this. One is contrary motion scales. So one hand is going up the scale, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, and the other hand is going down the scale, do, ti, la, so, fa, mi, re, do. So getting used to how those sound as you play them. Item two is we're gonna work on these little crescendi in the middle of the measure. And I don't know why they're not in every single measure, but regardless, it's a musical gesture. You're kind of digging in a little bit as you do the cross under with your thumbs. So we'll work on those two things, contrary motion scales, and then adding that little crescendo in the middle of the measure. So it's gonna feel like this. We start thumbs on middle C, sharing, and we're gonna keep the hands straight until the thumb crosses under the third finger and then the wrist will dip slightly and then it will float off the pinky. So it's gonna feel like this. We start a little straight, thumb folds under, playing at the very edge of the white key, and then it dips a little bit and then floating off the pinky. Reset, straight, little dip. That little dip is what creates the crescendo off and so forth. Here's exercise one. I want you to see first how we get into position for a nice firm hand position, finding the grip point. You get each finger on the keys, start with a lower wrist, press all the keys down and then just stand up. You'll find your hand position. You'll find where it's gripping. And then the down, up, up, up of the trill. And then the down, up, up, up motion of the trill is gonna look like this. First I'll go slow, down, up, up, up. Take a look at the wrist. quickly, you're just going to feel the down. The wrist won't move quite as much. So now we'll go through the whole entire exercise. Three and four and one and down, up, 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 down. One, two, left hand's getting ready. Here we go. Straight, under our left shoulder.
as you move through this book, as you master this exercise, you might like to try this in different keys because the other thing it's doing that I forgot to mention is we're getting used to how this key feels. Now this one is all a white key, so it's not gonna really feel much different. You're just starting on a different note in the scale. However, if we were doing it in the key of G, for example, we'd have to negotiate where that F sharp was and so forth. So now, exercise two, brushing the teeth. This takes place all within the pentascale, which is do, re, mi, fa, so. So two notes next to each other within this shape. So there's a couple things that are tricky about this. The first one is that the fingers are not gonna be playing the same notes. So when the right hand is playing do and re, it's gonna be using fingers one and two. When the left hand's playing do and re, it's gonna be playing fingers five and four. And you will have passages like this in the repertoire. So it's good to get used to playing the same notes with different fingers. And the other thing we'll be working on in this is putting eight notes in a gesture. In the previous exercise, we had down, up, 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 down. We had four per down. Now we're gonna have eight per down, which is gonna feel a little bit different. I think this is a good exercise to practice hands separately. So we'll first start with do and re, C and D in this case. So we'll have down, up, 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 down. hand. Don't let the wrist move up too quickly. Exercise two, brushing the teeth from the side view. I just want you to see the hands going together. I'll just play the first line. So we have down. And so forth. We'll do it one time slowly, one time quickly. So what we're listening for is the fingers playing at the same time. Again, like in number one, alarm clock, you wanna keep the fingers very, very close to the keys. And we're playing on the tips for this. Here we go, hands together, starting on do. Ready, and. quickly. Ready, go. Sometimes when I'm going really quickly too, I like to try to voice the other hand. So this time I'm going to make the left hand a little bit louder. the stairs is a four octave scale and all we've got to remember is the order of the cross whichever hand starts with the thumb crosses first and the crosses go first with three and then under four so three four is the cross the thumb hand goes first but right hand will also cross with three first and then four just is a little bit after the left hand so we have left hand first then right hand then left hand right hand left hand We have a one chord, first inversion in the right hand, four chord, fa, la, do, five, seven chord, fa, so, ti, and back to our one chord. 
couple of things to consider when you're playing the scales. Keep your hands in a nice position and let the thumb fold under rather than moving and pivoting a lot. And try not to go up and down with your hands. So I'll do it one more time. So exercise for chinning yourself. This one is quite difficult, so I'm gonna demonstrate each hand separately. Couple things to keep in mind. Two and four are gonna to want to shake and not wanna stay on the keys. Three and five are gonna to wanna to fly in the air. The goal is to get them just resting as if nothing was going on, and then the thumb's gonna sneak under and play at the very edge of the keys. A slight pivot as you go up to the farthest point is okay. Not this, but just slightly. You pivot just a little bit, see the angle of the hand here is slightly, but not too much. So let's give this a try. I'm gonna do maybe two times through. So concentrating on keeping all these fingers, see my four is being really wobbly today. Now slight pivot, the slightest of pivots. Let's see if finger three can really rest. left hand so we'll do the left hand now same principle it's going to be pivoted a little bit at the beginning because of the big reach slight pivot here okay don't do a huge one this gets us ready for arpeggios this folding under as well as cross unders and scales so chaining yourself i want you to see from the side how much of a pivot there is we're going to put this down Rest everything else. And then just a slight pivot. Not too far. This would be too much if I go like this. Just a little one. So when you actually play this all the way through, just know that you're going to do the pattern seven times and then stop. So you don't need to read the music, but rather watch your thumbs, watch your hands. And the two and four are, they're gripping on the finger pads for this one. So let's give this a try seven times through. Here we go. One. exercise in stamina. exercise to practice in different positions. You will really get flexible if you can do that. Exercise five, walking. Some of the same concepts we've had with a circular motion. In the right hand, we'll start in our kind of normal C positions, do, re, mi, fa, so. But if you notice in measures three and four, all of a sudden the top of the pattern gets more spread out. So what we're going to want to do with the right hand is two things. One is shift the hand slightly to the right to allow this portion here not to feel as stretched out. If we're stretching that out, that gets a little dangerous. But if we turn it to the side, then it's not as stretched. The other thing is it'll be easier for the right hand if as you play this, you shift a little bit further out and try to get the four and five on the same plane. That will mean lifting up the thumb and letting it kind of follow the contour of the hand. So I'm just gonna do it the right hand alone to demonstrate. So. We're gonna have a wrist motion under, over, and it'll feel like this. Two of those. Then we're gonna turn a little bit more to the side. See where my right hand is playing on the keys a little bit further out.
two. The left hand does not have to modify as much because the stretch between two and one is a lot different than the stretch between four and five. So as we play this hands together, I'm gonna to have the left hand wrist mirror what the right hand wrist is doing, and we're really gonna be focusing on the right hand. Again, don't look at your music while you're playing this. Just know you've got two on each. And then the last one is the scale with the first note a little bit longer. So it's do, re, mi, fa, so, do, re, mi, fa, la, do, re, mi, fa, ti, and then whole scale. Here we go. Two of these. basically staying in the same place on the keys. The right hand is scooting out and out with fingers two, three, and four as the stretch gets larger. So running has a couple things going on in it. It's a quick one, so we're gonna to wanna to have a nice curved hand position. So that's gonna mean a nice bridge, firm first knuckle playing on the tips. We have a new syllable in this exercise. Do, re, mi, fa, so. Now that F sharp, changes this syllable's name from fa to fi. So we have so, fi, so, fi, half step. And then similarly on line two, we have so, la, ti, do, re. Now we've got the altered do, so it's gonna be re, di, re. So altered syllable, first of all. And physically, we're gonna play this with a swooping gesture of the wrist for the pentascale. So swoop. Now instead of digging in to those, we're gonna stand up and play them lightly. It's kind of like you're marking time and then something's going on. Same thing with the left hand. So roll up with the wrist and stand up. This will feel a little bit different because the thumb is so short, you're really gonna be playing this on the tip of your thumb. So running from the side view, I want you to just see the top of the pattern. So we're gonna swoop. Hands together, it's going to sound like this. Roll up, switch positions, here we go. Roll up, one, two, back down to C. Now when we go a little bit more quickly, because it's running after all, these swoops won't be so large. And I also wanna point out we have, we're starting with our one harmony with Do on the bottom, then So, five dominant harmony, one and So. So let's try it a little bit more quickly. One, two, three, ready and go. One, roll up and switch. So jumping, we're practicing harmony, we're practicing staccati, and we're practicing these little three note slurs, just lifting off. So let's go over the right hand first. So we've got do, mi, so. That harmony would be called our one harmony because do is the bottom note and they're all stacked up in thirds. So it's a root position chord, C chord. So we have this. Now, fingers three and five are gonna move up to fa, la. Now, all of a sudden, 
we don't have a chord stacked up in thirds. So this chord is no longer a Do chord, it's based on something else. So if we put the Do up here, we can see that this chord is based on Fa. So root position, by the way, always stacked up in thirds. Easy to find the name of the chord when it's in root position. So when we put the Do down here, that's just called an inversion. So we have one chord, four chord, and then one chord. Then we're gonna move up. Thumb is gonna go to G and we have our five chord. You see it's root position, it's a third. So, so, T, Re. And then that one moves up just as we had moved up before. So now you see we have a fourth here and a third here. Again, that's a chord and an inversion. So to find out what chord it is, we have to get it so it's stacked up in thirds. So that's a C chord in inversion. So we're going from a G chord to a C chord inversion. So this is gonna be called five, and then a one chord with G on the bottom. So five, one, five, and then we're back to one, and four, one. Now this chord here is called a five, seven. We have G, we have F, and we have B. Now we wanna to try to stack that up in thirds. It's actually missing a note, so it's a little trickier. So that's what the full chord would be. You see, so that's a five, seven. One, three, five, seven. So often we'll play the 5-7 without the D. So 5-7. So those are all the chords. Chord inversions can be a little bit tricky sometimes, but you will get used to it the more you do it. So the second thing I want to point out is the touch of these staccati. So we're going to try to snap them kind of quickly, a quick snap. We're not going to do this. We're just going to snap the wrist quickly. It's almost like you're grabbing and then the slur will be down lift. So same thing for the left hand, the fingering for the left hand is gonna be one, three, five, one, two, five, one, three, five. And then the five, seven for the left hand is one, two, five. Whereas in the right hand, it's five, four, one. Sometimes that can be confusing because again, your fingers sometimes wanna play the same fingers versus the same notes. Jumping from the side view, I want you to see the snap of the wrist. We're trying to get the notes to play at the same time. So it's going to feel like this. So let's try this one, hands together. We're going to do it nice and slowly. So we have snap, snap, move. Down, up move. Try to let your release get you to the next position of the chord. Down, lift, and down, lift, five, seven. Then roll up, four, four counts. So let's try that a little more quickly. One, two, ready, go. backward bend. The right hand is alternating between C first inversion, Mi, So, Do, and G7, Fa, So, T. We're not having the Re in that chord, so it's just a three note G7. And left hand is doing the chromatic scale. Remember, the fingering for a chromatic scale is one, two on the white keys, and then black keys, one, three, one, three, one. So it's going to look like this. Two,
three, four. Again, I'd recommend just looking at your hands. No, every eight notes, you're gonna switch the right hand chord. So exercise nine, flinging arms out and back. We're working with a broken chord here. Instead of playing the chord all at once, we're gonna play it one at a time with triplets. That's that little three, and it's a little confusing because we've got one, two, three, five, three, two for the fingerings, and then there's those threes in the middle of the notes, joining those notes together. So right hand, we have do, mi, so, do. One, two, three, five. The left hand has one, two, four, five. We're gonna be going in contrary motion. One hand going up in the scale, one hand going down in the scale. So in this, we're gonna work on the technique for the broken chords, which instead of having the hand straight like this, we're gonna curve it slightly to the right. See that I'm creating a U shape here with my thumb and first finger. It helps make the flow a little bit easier for these broken chords. So I'll go through the gesture for the first line here because we're just gonna switch between do and so, so our one chord and our dominant chord for this. So we'll have do, mi, so, do, kind of under and over three times. See how as I curve my hand like this, I'm playing a little bit more on the side of my finger instead of straight like this to be straight and rigid. We're gonna have it be more loose and supple this way. Down, up. So when you get to the top, you're standing up on your pinky to get ready for the back down. Same thing with the left hand. So it's gonna go under, stand up, under. The only thing that's different in the left hand is the finger. try this hands together nice and slowly really you can just watch your hands you're going to do three of them on each except for the last one on G we'll just do one so let's do C one this time. Make sure to hold this for three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a. When you're playing things with triplets, you want to make sure that you feel the pulse of a triplet on the longer notes. So on the quarter notes, you're feeling three and then on the half notes, you're feeling six of them. Now let's try this a little more quickly. The motions will be smaller when you're going faster. Exercise 10, cartwheels, is a practice of an arpeggio, a two octave arpeggio in the key of C. So we're gonna be using do, mi, so, and then do. So the way I like to practice arpeggios is by blocking the position. So we're gonna take do, mi, so, fingers one, two, three. We're gonna play it up an octave, play the pinky, and back down. This gets you used to which fingers are playing each key. And then when we play it one at a time, instead of having my hand straight like this, I'm gonna shift over to the right, creating a U shape here between the thumb and finger number two. And then the thumb is gonna fold under. It's a lot easier than stretching like this, folding under. We got a large interval here of a fourth for that thumb to try to reach. So one at a time, it's gonna look like this. See the angle of my hand slightly angled towards the pinky. A lot 
lot easier than this trying to reach. So we'll do the same thing with the left hand. The left hand's gonna start with a pinky by itself, then blocking the chord. Left hand fingering is four, two, one, block, 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 chord. We'll do that one more time. Now the left hand in this root position arpeggio only has the interval of a third. It's an easier crossover and fold under. So here's the left hand by itself. hands together, you're going to be focusing more on the right hand because it has that larger fold under. So we'll go over the second line here real quick. So right hand's going to fold under first, then the left hand folds under. Then the left hand goes first, right hand, big fold. We'll do this two times through, starting with the right hand. Here we go. Folding. Folding back over, left hand's turn. time on cartwheels arpeggios are a very very important part of piano playing and they're worth practicing a lot exercise 11 the push-up this is working on double thirds which are tricky to play especially playing legato so we have a couple things in here we're working within the c harmony and the g harmony once again you see the new pitches here we've got do and mi re fa mi so then a half step down, which is going to be re and fi. When you raise re and fa, they turn into re and fi, and then back down. And then similarly, in line two, we have so, t, g, and b, la, do, a, c, t, re, which is b and d. Then we have li and D. So La and Do move up a half step to Li and D. What I'm wanting you to get used to is these half steps, what they look like, what they sound like. So the tip for playing this legato is we're going to put a roll up on each beat. This is going to be played more on the pad portion of the hand, but we still want a nice firm hand position. So for this, I'm going to have you stand up, find that position. And then we're just rolling up on each combination of two fingers. So it's going to feel like this. Roll up, roll up, roll up, roll up, roll up, and so forth. I know it will feel like lots of roll ups, but we're rolling up so we can get used to these fingers playing as a unit. Left hand is a little bit harder. So I want you also to consider your hand position when you have this switch. When you release the D and F, move them in. Don't move them in at the last minute. Same with the left hand. So again, with this, we have one line of C, one line of G, one line of C, and then we have our cadence, which means we are going from our five chord to our one chord. So the fingering for that last C and E should be two and one and one and four with the right hand. The push up, I'll do it two times, one time slowly, one time more quickly, so you can see the roll up. So here we roll up. So let's 
let's try this, hands together. You're really focusing on the roll-ups. Can you get the notes to play at the exact same time? Here we go. Once you've got it, you can try it a little faster. Really focusing. Finally, we have fit as a fiddle and ready to go. We have the new syllables. The fi and the D. We've got the chord harmonies of one, five, one, five, seven. And I think the trickiest thing about this fit as a fiddle and ready to go is the hands are doing two different articulations. So you really have to focus on keeping one down and one up. So what I mean by that, if we're playing both hands together in this harmony in measure one, the right hand is glued to the piano, except for the beat four, and the left hand is just touching for these staccati. And it's not the easiest thing to do. So left hand pops off, left hand pops And so a little more quickly, right hand's gonna pop off exactly with the left hand on beat four, so it'll feel like this. Move. Move. And then right hand holds while the left hand's just touching. One thing the left hand's gonna wanna do is go up, up. It's gonna wanna go down, but you have to really concentrate. Up. And then they switch in measure five. So then the left hand has the legato and the right hand has just the touching. So it's gonna feel like this. So right hand pops off. Then together, down, up, touch, one, two. So I'll play that a little more quickly. Here we go, one, two, three, for right hand smooth, left hand light. They switch. One, two, three, four. Thank you for watching this video on group one from Dozen A Day's Orange Book. I hope you found it helpful and I hope you will subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and also videos on piano literature and quick piano tips. Thanks again for watching.